to educate, motivate, and build one another through shared knowledge and success. This is Young and Successful, and these are your hosts, Jay Chukwi, Kenny Awashika, and PJ Luminan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Young and Successful podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited for this one. It's a beautiful Monday, top of the week. So we had to start it off very sharp with a very sharp guest as well. Okay. She has been serving for over 10 years now, and we'd like to absolutely thank you for that. Right. Um, started off uh, and was an avionics technician specialist uh, in the military. She is now serving as a career retention specialist and much more. Right. I don't want to give you all the beans because this interview for me is, is really a discovery mission as well. And I want all of us to go on this journey together. And this is where I'm really, I mean, aviation technician specialist, as much as you want to play it down. Okay. I think that this is something that is absolutely exciting for anyone who's, I mean, as a kid, I always wanted to fly. I think every kid wants that. We know further ado, Miss Polemi Ola Leye. Hey, that? that's right good job, good job, Listen, good job. Man, let me let me let me say something real quick i'm african okay <laughs> and my tongue has the ability to pronounce things that are unpronounceable to most human beings um but i've been dropping the ball man this is what america is doing to me pelumi yes pelumi, how are you doing today good thank you how are Absolutely. you doing great i want to thank you so much for taking the time out to join us i know you're busy right we can see you in your uniform right now it really means a lot to us, um, and it, it really helps with moving the whole mission here forward, right? And like you told us a little bit earlier, you know, from listening to our podcast, that kind of prompted you to look into certain things that you've been that uh, are related to you that PJ brought up, and here you are now, and we hope that in the same way is going to touch someone else as well, All right? Awesome. Oh, well, okay, Kenny, do you want to start this off for us then? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we have a Marine in the house, y'all. Um, as you all know, it's one of the toughest uh, division of the military that is uh, most difficult to get into outside of special forces, which is still under the Marines, if I'm correct. Yes. Um, so, um, hey, if a, if, if a strong guy like me <laughs> <laughs> can make it, you know, uh, it was quite amazing to have uh, someone like a colony, uh, be able to make it through training and also be making a serious impact in the Marines. So uh, like uh, Shay was saying earlier, we're very grateful to have you on the show. Thank you. Yeah. So um, this is Young and Successful and we like to just show all the people, you know, uh, how, how and what it takes to be successful. And right. 10 years in the Marines is no joke. And we're just hoping that maybe you can give us a quick summary into that 10 year journey. Uh, I'm sure you've had some tough ones along, along the way, but uh, hit us up on some uh, success stories and some rough times in the military. Um, thank you all for having me in the show. And I was mentioning earlier how Peter um, had touched my life uh, because for so long I didn't touch my TSP. And then he was talking about investment on that show. And I was like, what investments do I have? And I only had right. one at that time. And that was my TSP. So he encouraged me. So thank you, uh, Young and Successful, for all you do. So as far as being um, in the Marine for 10 years, it is tough. Um, there are definitely good days, but it is a tough, um, it's a tough uh, branch of the military just because everything that we do. But um, I have had a lot of lows, mostly lows, um, and that's just because it is a learning platform for me. Um, a lot of people come in here and they're physically fit, they're mentally strong. Um, I was mentally strong when I joined, but I was not physically fit, and um, I had to learn that. It took me years to get fit. I mean, I made it through boot camp because I had people that were pushing me, my drill instructor that pushed me to finish and so um as we as this show goes along i want to touch more on all my lows the all my lows that made me the person that i am today um there's nothing that i cannot accomplish just because i've gone through so much lows and so much um so much failures um in the marine corps absolutely 
That's I mean, this is absolutely incredible. And I think that one thing that you say and, and um, how you kind of hold it up, going through so many lows and yet those lows not being what made you stop, right? right? However, those lows being what has continuously built you to, um, to where you are right now. I think that that is a mindset that is kind of, it, it just cannot be, uh, I don't know, I almost feel like that you have to be very intentional, right? Mm -hmm. um, because most of the time when you're, when you're going through difficulties, when you're going through hard times and you're in pain, your mind and your body is screaming for you to stop, right? right? How do you get yeah. around that? right yeah. and how do you keep going for 10 years and I've a lot of you know and, and one that is obvious right i'm just going to punch at it because it is there um but being a woman in the marines this is something that has been a topic around forever and right. um obvious one of those women who is in there doing it right getting it done and that is absolutely you know it's, it's a beautiful thing it's absolutely phenomenal but I'm going to just kind of roll back here. Um, getting into the Marines, what was it for you? What inspired you to do that? Is it something you've always been interested in? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I was 24 years of age right. and working at one of the largest, well, it is the largest department store in the nation, and that's Macy's, 34th right. Street, Manhattan, New York. And I was the human resources representative at that time. And every day I would uh, walk past this uh, little tiny place in the, in the wall, I used to call it, and I would see Navy and I saw Marine Corps as well. And right. every day and night I would come back and I'll walk past and I'll just kind of peek through it to see what's going on inside. And I see these people working out, doing pull-ups, um, doing all kinds of like strange physical activities. <laughs> I was just like, what are they doing in there? And so one day I just had to poke my head inside, not the Navy one, but the Marine Corps Marine. recruiting one. Right. And all these people were, all the, and they were mostly men. And I want to show you a picture real quick right. of what made me decide that, was, that I'm going to join the Marine Corps. So here you see, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. But, but this was a big poster that I saw um, of this woman, this Black woman, to be more specific. Right. And I was like, I can do that. If she can do that, I can do that. I didn't know who she was right. at that time. But now um, she's actually the head, um, like pretty much executive director in civilian terms. She's a sergeant major um, of where I work now. Right. And right. I refuse to go see her just because like, when I see her, she's just so strong and she's like a badass <laughs> woman. And um, she has asked me or asked my uh, boss here, my media boss here to come see her. And right. I refuse just because like I get like really nervous. Like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> and I, and uh, because people know my story, I have this picture that you just saw all over my office. And so um, when I went in, I went in there, um, the recruiter was like, can you run? I was like, yeah. Maybe. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's see and find out. Right. Um, I, was, I was not very physically fit before I went. I mean, I took nice, like, nice strolls like anybody else would, but I wasn't like physically fit. So um, I went in there and I did the best I could and I passed and the rest was history. So once you got in there and, you know, go through boot camp and everything and you got out and you got to a point where you were an aviation technician specialist mm -hmm. tell us a little bit go ahead can i totally jump man you should, should make i know so i'm easy. just <laughs> dude i am just i'm dying to just find out about this flight situation okay but let's I roll it back let's slow it. i know hey, dude. It's, it's exciting well, go no ahead. Joke, man. tell us I about training i'm sure that <laughs> it was difficult for us at least to, 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 to get started um, well, yeah. no, absolutely. Yes, let's go ahead, Kenny. Let's let's talk about that some more, actually. So. I mean, coming from someone that doesn't work out usually, you just go for regular strolls to mm -hmm. running all those miles, to doing the pull-ups, to doing the push-ups. Yeah. I'm sure your mind at some point told you to quit. And in your in absolutely. your in your in your introduction, you were saying that you know you gotta just fail so many times to be right. successful, and that's the trend that we've been learning from the people that we've been interviewing. 
So I guess one of your early start start of failures was going through training. Tell us tell us a little bit. Just you know, give us a little quick two minutes on surviving training from someone that doesn't usually work out. Hi. Um, so my failure began the moment that I went into that recruiter office without doing my research, because when I got to boot camp, I didn't know what boot camp was. I mean. I failed to do my research. I failed to talk to people that have done it before or even YouTube it or Google it. I failed to do that. So one of the things that you have to do as a Marine, uh, besides the gas chamber, being locked in the gas chamber for minutes and smelling the poison in the air, like besides that, besides jumping from, I don't know, 30 feet in, in the air, like besides right. all that, they're swimming. Mm. You gotta know how to swim. I didn't know how to swim. I probably should have learned that before I went to boot camp. But this is a three, over three months training that we do. And it's the longest training out of all any other branches. Marines have the longest training. So I, like a month in, you have to, tra- you have to show that you can swim. If you don't show that you can swim, it's either you fail you know, go back to being a civilian or we'll give you another try. So they gave me another try. <sighs> and you have to so learn how to swim in one month? You have to learn how to swim in order to graduate. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You have, it's, it's a prerequisite. You cannot pass boot camp unless you know how to swim. And uh, the beauty of failure is that you get to learn from it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll talk more about that as this goes along. But when I went in there and I failed the first time, they told me, uh, well, you know, the, I wasn't the only failure. So they told me you get to come back again tomorrow and try again. I went and went the next day. I didn't pass for six days. I, I was in that water for like a good four or five hours learning how to swim, drowning. <laughs> But learning how to swim. Um, so on the seventh day, so they started out with about maybe 40 failures, people that can swim. And I watched these people, you know, struggle and they fight and they got it. So day seven, last day of passing or trying to pass. Otherwise, you get moved to a different class or you can choose to just give up and be like, okay, this is not for me. I want to go back to being a civilian. So I was like, today is today. I have to do this, uh, right? So out of like 40 people, there was me and another female Marine. Oh, well, female recruit. Because we weren't Marines yet because we have not passed. And so you have to dive into the water from about 18 feet. Right. <laughs> and I was, I'm, I'm nervous thinking about it. I hate it with him so yeah, much. I'm... <laughs> I'm saying, I'm like, you know, I can't, so I can't, I, I can't I, swim, so I, I stay away from water, and this is. <laughs> <laughs> so I got up there, and you know, you have to go, you have to clutch your arms, look up, look down, look left, right, and then jump, right. So I looked up, and I just fell in the water, just face down in the water. <laughs> oh, failed! So I started drowning. So they pull me out. Try again. I was like, no, I don't want to. I want to oh. quit. I want to go home. I want to eat in I want. I just want to oh. leave. <laughs> I just want to get out of here. And so that was, you know, that was just uh, yeah, failure right. telling me, okay, you already failed. Just yeah. let us give up. But there was something in the back of my mind. This woman that I saw mm. that was telling me, you know, keep fighting. Keep going. And so keep going. And so I just kept on going. I, I got up there. I did what I'm supposed to do. Look left, look right, look up. And I did as I, and I jumped and I just, I just let the water carry me through. Right. And I, and, and I passed. Um, so to answer your question, how did I make it through boot camp? It was just this woman, Sergeant Major Smith Levy, who's her name. Uh, I know that now. And just having in my mind, like, I don't want to go back to where I came from. I want to succeed in this. I mean, book was easy for me. Um, Learning, reading, whatever was easy. College was easy, but this wasn't easy. And I just was determined to make it. 
on that seventh day and I did and everything mm-hmm. since everything after that was just a breeze um running I already I passed the you know the first time so I right. just that was fine and swimming was you, fine were you, were, you, were you like fine. running like an antelope I mean I was I was definitely a slow runner but I I did enough to pass I didn't I wasn't doing the no, the minimum but I ran fast enough and I tried and they see that so yeah, yeah. that's life you have to try you have to do your best when you're doing the the, the minimum you're not going to get much out of it but when you're giving your best effort you're putting your best foot forward somebody will see that and they and they will keep and they will allow you to keep going um and succeed you know i um as you as you you were saying that there it something came to my mind and i just had to write it down before i forget it <clears throat> and it's actually i believe this is the marine motto it says adapt overcome conquer you might yes. be familiar with that yes and and as i'm listening to everything you you're saying so far i'm like you are literally that line right there adapt overcome conquer you were, i mean you already had it in you from the get-go yeah. that's 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 boot camp right <laughs> and you can see from that to where you are right now I'm, I'm sure you've had to repeat this over a bunch of times right like you said you've had to deal with a lot of um failure and overcoming them right adapting overcoming them and conquering them this is why you're on the level where you are right now so um before we actually fast forward into the avionics situation obviously because the geek part of me just wants to hear a lot about that <laughs> right? um, 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 but before we get to, to that i, I want to i want you to talk a little bit about um just discipline and mindset right obviously you've kind of been through the situations um quite a bit where you have to deal with tough situations and you have to also carry yourself in a way that um, not only represents yourself and the marines you know at, in the highest light um mm-hmm. but you also have to fight your mindset as well and you also have to discipline yourself and that's not something that comes overnight so a little bit of how you uh, deal with that and what you've done to kind of maintain uh the discipline and, and that mindset so uh, if i understand uh your question correctly are you asking mm-hmm. uh about determination yeah I'm, well, I'm just yeah you could say it's determination right like for you yeah. personally um mm-hmm what did you have to like what did you have to do to kind of cultivate that mindset of discipline determination and just consistency over time mm-hmm. right to to keep doing what you're doing yeah so um it is so easy to quit right. we all know that like it's right. so easy to say i want to do um you know a mile today yeah. and then you are 0.25 and you start feeling hungry you know like, you know what i'm just gonna go get something down right it's so easy to do that but um when you when you say okay i'm gonna do a, a one mile mm-hmm. and whatever comes your way you know phone calls like come back to work i'm hungry i'm tired i'm sleepy but you just the ability to be able to block that out it's so immersed it's so intense it's so um uh, it's so that's what determination is, like right. to say, I want to do this. So with me, with being in the Marine Corps, it is so easy um, time after time to say, you know, I can't do this anymore. I can't right. do swimming anymore. I can't go to the rifle range and also the pistol range. Um, I can't be at work at seven o'clock in the morning, it's too early. Uh, I have to be with my family, my kid. It's so easy, but what keeps me um, grounded is just is this is my mind um telling myself i know this is hard i know this is tough but it cannot be worse than learning to swim for seven days uh four or five hours a day so for me it started from boot camp it started from being like i felt like if i can pass swimming i could do anything after that right. but there's nothing worse than that in the in, you know in my world um Absolutely. so to answer your question, what gives me ground and what gives me determined is just, you know, up here and remembering um, yeah. that I made it through boot camp and I can make it through anything. <laughs> and honestly, I feel like they should have like a mock 
training for people that having determination problems <laughs> because if you go through marine Corps training <laughs> you will be good for the rest of your life because it is not easy but once you get to it right. you are good to go i think i think that's necessary i agree with you there uh, if, <laughs> if 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 every i mean i think if if uh kids at a certain point right it's kind of like back home uh when we we're pretty much in boarding school um by the time we're in high school and for me that taught me a lot of training because it was pretty much almost same to not same but similar sort of practices to the military right wake up early you're on schedule show up to time to class on time and all that good stuff you get punished for showing up late you get punished for not doing your homework and that drills there's a level of discipline that you learn from that from a very young age so absolutely Mm -hmm. i agree with that you can't wait to talk about aviation and of course aviation (laughs) in the marines takes serious level of quality nothing right. without quality like you can't do anything in the marines without quality i mean on time all the time man that's what the marines are about so uh yeah. <laughs> i guess we can jump into that tell us about your journey towards avionics right it is obviously it's also one of those arenas where it's not it's not for the faint of heart right you have to be disciplined you have to know your stuff right there's a lot on the line uh, tell us tell us about that what made you go in that direction and how was that experience for you uh so here we come to my second failure um and i told you uh, my 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 strong because my one of my strengths is being able to read and study and college was a breeze getting my master's was a breeze like i enjoy that when i decided to join the marine corps you had to take a test like just to see where your iq is they call it the ASVAB. Mm-hmm. the armed forces um, uh, like tests. So I took the test and I scored really high. And one of the top things that it recommended for me was avionics. And, you know, I've always, I love flying um, because you love flying doesn't necessarily mean you, you'll be good at flying or you'll be good at fixing airplanes. Um, but I figured, you know, I love flying, you know, avionics, I love flying. Yeah, I get to fly all the time. <laughs> so I chose that job. And once you pick that job, you have to stay in that job, especially avionics for at least five years. So when I started that job, um, my platform was feed CH-53. So CH-53 is a jet that, you know, uh, picks up gear and um, military personnel and drops them off where they need to be. wherever it is, you know, in the middle of the forest somewhere, in the middle of the jungle. So it's, it's a really good aircraft for stuff, for doing stuff like that. So it is my job to fix um, things like night vision goggles, MVGs, um, GPS system, global positioning systems. And that aircraft has um, three, even four different GPS systems in it that we have that, that my job has to fix. And like Ken was saying earlier, it is important, it is imperative, it is important that when you are fixing those components, you fix them correctly. Because if you don't, then that is a pilot's life in danger. That is cargo, that is military members' life in danger. One piece of, um, one piece of capacitor, let's say, can mess up the old, the, the yeah. old, um, um, take, take down the flight, essentially. Take down, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So that made me nervous. Uh, I've been like, cause I had, I, I had to fix like one time I had to fix um, one of the GPS systems and I, I couldn't get it to pass because you, you know, once you fix it, you can run a test on it to make sure that's going to be good for flight. Right. But this, this piece of equipment was not passing, kept failing. So I took it to my boss who immediately knew what was wrong with it, right? Um, And this person had like two years of experience while I had one. So, I mean, a year is a lot, but, you know, compared to somebody with four or five years, 10 years, it is not a lot, you know what I'm saying? But this this person, this Marine, knew exactly what he was doing. Um, And I watched other Marines come into the job and succeed, but I knew that this wasn't for me. This right. job and, and and there and for that reason, I was in I was not I didn't get promoted for almost three four years. 
oh, wow. um, because oh, wow. I kept failing three, I kept failing time time after time um, in doing my job in providing quality work, quality um, equipment for this aircraft. Right. So, and it has cost me over time this failure of not doing proper research before I ever came to the military. Um, and while I was in the military trying to improve myself, I just gave up um, after that first year of time over time, not providing quality work, quality components for this aircraft. I gave up, I said I was gonna get out. Um, so that was, I know you guys wanted to hear awesome um, <laughs> things that happened no, with this I aircraft, so. but. <laughs> I think I, would, I wouldn't say so because the, the whole point of, the whole point of Young and Success, I'm not necessarily that we are looking for to hear anything awesome. Obviously if mm -hmm. awesome things happen, I think that that is great, but success does not come from winning necessarily you well you, you're successful when you win that's a good one right there kenny i'm about to drop bars <laughs> on these people oh, <laughs> <you're not laughs> <like the> <laughs> hey hey listen hey put my name next to that one because i just came up with that right now <laughs> <laughs> that's you, you you attain success after you you fail and you try and you try again right and that is the part that is interesting. That is the part that, for me at least, is very, um, is very inspiring. The, the consistency, the motivation, the need to keep going. Because if, if, if I'm struggling at something and I see that someone has been working hard at it and they got to a certain point, I feel more motivated to keep going, right? At the same time, for me, um, I guess, you know, and for some people as well, I think uh, failure does not register as a crushing as a crushing uh, event in my mind, right? So I think that that is, that is the important part and it shows all across the board. You see people who have consistently tried and like you said, once you came on, it, you've failed consistently, yeah. but you're still there. Yeah. So that is, that is, you know, we cannot ignore that. You're still there mm -hmm. and you're still moving up. So af after you left avionics, right? You finally got to this point where you're like, you know what? Go ahead, Kenny. Yes, so let us jump in real quick. Because yeah. I heard something uh, when, when, she, when she was saying something about the avionics and how she selected yeah. avionics. So the research that you did not do, does mm -hmm. that also include not researching enough about your role when you joined the military as well? When you joined the Marine as, as well? Can you talk exactly. a little bit about that as well? Yeah, so um, it is... Um, and, and, and I think we're about to transition to how I'm successful now. And mm -hmm. I wrote it down and I wrote, uh, I wrote down, try, try again. And I also wrote down, uh, reach out and touch somebody mm -hmm. and reach out and touch somebody is that, you know, when we, um, have failures, you just feel like you're doing something wrong and you may be doing something wrong. But you will only be validated when you reach out and touch somebody and say, hey, you know, put your hand on somebody like, hey, I'm failing at this. What can I do better? Not only that, not that is when you will be, that's when you will have the information that you need to succeed. For some people, in my case, that was the case. So I, I, as an avionics uh, marine uh, specialist, I was getting ready to transition to become a civilian because I thought that was it. Right. Um, I, I, I failed to research the Marine Corps. Um, I failed to um, research the job that I have chosen. It would be so nice, so beneficial for me to ask the simple question like, what is this job? Right. Not just going off of the fact that I have the point to, quali to qualify to, um, to do this job, but what is it? Like, what am I going to be doing? Well, I, I thought I'll be flying. The, the, I'm, I'm not a pilot, True. right? Right. So, but I was so naive and it's okay to be naive, yeah. but you have to do the research. You have to reach out and touch somebody and ask those questions. So when you join uh, any branch, you know, you do this test, they give you a list, a plethora list of things that you qualify for. It will be, it will be, it's necessary to ask like, hey, sir, ma'am, whoever your recruiter is, like, what is this job? Can you give me more information? That information is not enough. Google it to, to see what it's about. So after five years of being, of not getting promoted, 
excuse me, about you know, a little bit over four years of not getting promoted. I was getting ready to leave. And this is the exciting part, to leave the Marine Corps. And, you know, they give you the sheet to make sure that, you know, everything is good to go. You've done, um, you have a resume that you can submit to um, civilian sectors. And so I'm just getting, I'm just getting like, a, you know, people to sign off on this checklist to make sure that I'm good to transition to the civilian world. And I came across this female Marine. Uh, female Marines have done so much for me and I'm just so grateful to them, whoever is watching. And um, uh, Sergeant Ripper, now that's Sergeant Ripper, I went to her office that day and I'm like, and I had to she like, hey, sign up on this. She was like, you know, have a seat. Uh, what is your, she asked my, my information. She looked at us, she was like, wow. You know, you, you're good at running, you're good at combat training, you're good at pretty much all the physical activities um, that we require of you in the Marine Corps. Like everything is updated, you're good. Like you are, you are an outstanding Marine. Why is it that you're getting out? And I told her like, you see this? I have not been promoted for, you know, four years now. What is the point? I'm not getting the pay raises. What is the point? I want to get out and go make more money out in the civilian world. And she was like, what if I told you that that doesn't, have to, that, that doesn't have to be the case? You can do something you love. What is it that you love to do? And I was like, well, I did HR before I joined the Marine Corps. I mean, I have a bachelor's, I have a master's. I'm really good at reading books um, and talking to people. And she was like, really? You could do this job? <laughs> and I was like, what job is that? And she said, career retention specialist, the job that I'm doing now. And when I first heard that, um, like nobody, like I don't know about you guys, but like you don't walk into uh, like the office of like HR person and the person said, we can have my job. Like who says that? <laughs> so um, I was like, how do I get this job? And she sat me down. She told, she right my wrongs. She told me like all, like the things that you should have done to get you promoted, you didn't do because you already gave up. Yeah. But, you know, I'm going to give you one month. I'm going to give you a schedule and you are going to do all the things on this list to get you promoted. And you're going to change your job from avionics to career retention specialist. And nobody has ever done that. Yeah, and nobody, because I didn't, I didn't ask, right? Or they didn't ask. But I should, it's my career. It's, yeah. it, and I tell the Marines that I help now, like it's your career, nobody's gonna help you. Yeah. Nobody's gonna help you better than yourself. And I do the same thing for Marines now. So Sergeant Ripper sat me down, gave me this list and every day I was executing it, executing it. And I was promoted within uh, six months. I got promoted wow. um, and I signed a new contract, a new four year contract with the Marine Corps. And I became a career retention specialist within those six months because um, I told this person my issue and this person gave me the tools that I needed to be successful. And um, today I'm doing the same thing for Marines um, to help them also um, be better than me, right? And uh, achieve the success that I have achieved uh, the last five years. That's a major right there, Shay. Hey, that's that, that, serious that is what I'm taking away from that and just listening to that. <clears throat> you know, I, I remember um, a couple of years ago when I when I yeah. first moved to Texas, um, and my uncle told me that, you know, anyone can climb a ladder, but you want to make sure a ladder is against the right wall. Right. right? And, uh, you know, it, that when you started talking about that, it reminded, it reminded me uh, very much of that conversation I had with him. I mean, you had the drive, you had the dedication and everything, but you were not doing something that you loved, right? It right. Like it and then because of that, it just kind of put you in this, I guess, yeah. in this zone where you were just you know, kind of like uh, pushing back against, you know, everything that was being, you know, I mean, and you're in this high pressure environment, right? Yeah. Probably not, not for you. You're dealing with all these electronics, right? Where it's holding right. someone's life and all of like the stuff and it just... But then you find yourself in this situation, which also brings me to the second biggest point, which I got away from listening to that incredible transition story there of yours, is asking for help. Right? You got to ask for help. I know it's it's a difficult thing. And it's also something that you know, a lot of people, myself especially, I struggled with it a lot because I'm, 
uh, that type of person who is sort of an introvert, right? And um, selectively an extrovert. Um, but I have always kind of struggled with that. And I think it's incredible right. how much, um, how much things can change and how much people can help you move forward by you just asking. And I think that that cannot be understated. So thank you. <laughs> that, was, that was incredible. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for, yeah. for doing that. And thank you for sharing as well. And now you're doing it for others too, which is the whole point, yeah. right? Kind of going yeah. full circle. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anyone can climb a ladder. It all depends on what wall the ladder is yeah. standing on. Exactly. That Make is sure major. That is against the right wall, man. That's all yeah. it is, right? Yeah. So um, if you could, let's say, what knowledge would you share? And I know you've already shared some of that for someone who is just starting off, right? right. What knowledge would you share with them over your, your, your 10 years of experience? In the mm -hmm. military, what sort of knowledge would you share with them? Not just specifically for joining the Marines, and of course it can be for that too, um, but for just life in general and going through those tough times and overcoming them. Uh, very much like you did. Uh, thank you for um, there's so there's a million and one things that I can uh, share knowledge wise, but I right. believe number one thing is patience. Uh, we as humans we want it and we want it now, sure. and that's just not how life works. Um, I would highly highly share with the with, with people that are watching that be patient because you will get to where you need to if you don't stop trying as long as you keep um, putting your right foot forward every day um, would you have days where you don't want to get out of bed yes would you have times where you just want to quit yes and that is okay but as long as you get up and you say, I'm going to do this one thing to better myself, no matter what it is. You know, I'm, I'm just going to get up and you know, lay my bed today. Um, something that simple where I'm going to wake up today and, you know, wash dishes in the sink. As long as you just do one thing towards what your goal towards is, your goal. Yeah. you will be successful compared to what I did for almost five years. And I just gave up and I just showed up every day and I accomplished zero. But um, if I had woken up and I just said today, I'm gonna say hi to someone and tell them I'm having a bad day that I don't like this job. Or if, if somebody could have told me something like, hey, why don't, you just go, why don't you go talk to this person? Why don't you go talk to you? Um, Sergeant Ripper? You know, cause she was there all those years. It was just that I just never utilized her services. Um, so if you're out there and you, have a goal in mind that you want to accomplish, but you just start having a hard time, but don't stop. Just ensure that um, you don't let the negativity um, trample over your goals, because if you let that happen, you will never achieve anything. Incredible. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, what do you say after that, man? Yeah, that, that is it all right there. That was all we just talked about this morning, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so exactly you know and that's so powerful and thank you thank you so much for that this is absolutely refreshing yeah, yeah talk, talk, talking of negativity uh, i'm sure we've all experienced it in our lives mm -hmm. uh can you just give us one little quick short story of one of your most difficult I already, I already challenges and how you overcame it because i think not that i think uh what we've heard over and over again from folks that we've interviewed is that you have to overcome several challenges, but there are gonna be those big major ones that come at you that almost make, that almost breaks you, uh, that you literally have to overcome for you to attain life successes. So if you can just give us maybe just one out of the many, that would be great. Yes, absolutely. Um, so as you have probably heard me say uh, quite a few times, I came to the Marine Corps with a master's degree. I have a bachelor's degree from North of Illinois, uh, Chicago in marketing and a master's degree in human resources um, from um, Dunwoody AIU, American Inter Intercontinental University, um, Atlanta. So when I joined the Marine Corps, I decided to go enlisted route instead of the officer route again. Uh, one of my many failures, but that's okay um, because I'm still here. I'm still charging on. Um, 
with those two degrees, you're able to become an officer um, through a program, what they call the enlisted commissioning program. So I submitted it. I submitted um, four different times for that to become a lieutenant in the Marine Corps, which is the first rank um, in the Marine Corps. And I submitted four times and all four times I was denied because I didn't have the leadership skills needed to become an officer in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. So then I submitted another one to the Navy, uh, but the Navy was like, oh, sorry, we don't have any more spaces for officers this year. <laughs> and so I continued on. Um, I, I, I stopped submitting any officer packages for a while. And then, but I had people, great leaders, uh, Gunnar Sharon Gibbs is one of them. He was okay. like, you got to submit. If, if, if not for an enlisted commissioning program, there's another program towards um, officership, which is um, the chief warrant officer program. Uh, so I submitted for the warrant officer program. And what it is, is like here, the best way I can explain it is that here's enlisted, here's one officer, and here is general officer. So one officer, um, after a few years, three or four years, you could submit to become a general officer, which a general officer is what becomes general, um, become, you become a, a, a general, essentially. With one officer, I mean, you're still an officer, but your, um, but your power is less than that of a general officer, if that so makes are sense. You, are you saying Got that it. someday we're going to call you General Pillowy? Uh, I'm already going to call a general producer and I'm already ready for it. So. <laughs> Hopefully. So, um, so the, the, the point is that I, after eight submission, eight? S, eight submissions, wow. I finally got selected for um, one officer last year. Um, so I'll be going to the course in January of 2022. Right. Wow. Congratulations so, on that. Eight years is a long wait. Yeah. Huh? And that, so are you saying that your lack of research at the start cost you eight years? No, she did eight I submissions. Say it cost me. It, it, eight years taught me patience oh, and gosh. taught me humility. Two oh, things wow. that I didn't have. So... I think it's a blessing in disguise because, oh, wow. yeah, you can say, I mean, maybe if I had done my research, I would have probably chosen to become an officer, right. but I would not be here talking to you in this uniform either. I think my ego would have gotten in the way. I would feel as if I am an officer, therefore, I am the queen of the world right. and I own what everything. What I think. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that is not a good quality as a leader, I don't think. Yeah, um, right. And I yeah, believe I that once that. I become a once I become a general officer, God willing, I will be so humbled to the point where uh, someone that is, um, you know, so, someone that is of a lesser grade in terms of um, rank yeah. in the position in the military, that person is human. That person wears the, their pants the same way I will put on my pants, right? Mm -hmm. So. I think it's important to be able to have, to let that person have a voice of their own. Because um, I may be higher ranking, but that person that, that, that that's subordinate also have good opinions, good good things that he or she can contribute to the Marine Corps. But I, had I been, had I came into the Marine Corps as an officer, I would not understand that. I, I think I, I would have been like, if, if a junior Marine is speaking, while I'm speaking, you know, it will be, it was, oh, you know, but that's not necessary. Absolutely. You could, you could, you, you could teach someone a lesson without going through, without hurting your voice box. Yeah. Um, and so, um, being thought, enlisted now, I thought that was part of the training. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, I get, I get, I totally get what what she's what, yeah, what I mean, I mean, saying. And, 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 you know, people. Some leaders are like that. Some people, some leaders believe that the the best way to train. Mm -hmm. um, is through uh, through that that type of leadership where you know, you're screaming and yelling, mm -hmm. but I I have learned that it is best to uh, to lead and discipline a marine mm -hmm. through what 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 will work best for them, and I think that that's mm -hmm. through two way communication. 
Right. And oh, you yeah. can't have a two-way communication when you yell at someone and so trying you, to make them do something. You, you want to lead with empathy. I, I, I don't say empathy. And communication. Definitely okay. communication. Um, because, you know, this job, I'm very professional. Um, and I will give empathy when it's needed. Uh, but I'm the kind of leader that definitely want to communicate a two-way communication to what's going on with that brain. Uh, because we all have different situations going on. Right. Um, and so I, I know that now being, being in the Marine Corps for 10 years as an enlisted Marine, uh, whereas if I was an officer, I don't think I would really understand that or value that information. I like that. I think I think I, I agree with you there. Um, 100 percent. I think as a leader and, and when you explain it, um, explaining how you kind of went through the ranks and how that has shaped your mindset right, mm -hmm. where you're now this leader who would essentially lead from the front, right? You would you wouldn't be asking someone to do something that you would not do, right? You're exactly. doing it, so you're That's the light. That's called leading from the back, was From the back? No, yeah. like leading, leading from the back is like, go and do this, but I'm not doing it, <laughs> right? But leading from the front is like, hey. Uh, do, do as I say, and I... Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know? yeah. But leading from the front, you're leading as an example because you've been there, you've experienced it, you know what uh, the lower ranking officers are dealing with because you experienced okay. it. So now you're able to tailor your leadership for better reception if, if i'm getting that correct that yeah thing. absolutely yeah. yeah yeah i love it i love it yeah that's so great by interviewing folks like you we can hopefully touch one person out there and mm -hmm. uh you know make their life better so yeah so we had the question of your definition of success and definitely what is your why okay and um i wrote that down too <laughs> so she's I, prepared no... man now she's doing the research <laughs> Hey, so, always, man. Hey. Success, is, success is different for different for, for different people because everybody has different goals that they want to achieve yeah. in life success for me i wrote it down i wrote um write it down work at it achieve it success again is write it down work at it achieve it so write down what it is that you want to be successful at Mm. Right. Uh, so for me, my goal is to become a general officer. I have been working at it for the last eight field um, packages that I've submitted, but I finally right. got accepted at the ninth one. So I, wor I worked at it. I wrote it down. I worked mm -hmm. at it. And I've, I've achieved, I've, I've achieved it in my way. Right. So that's right. success for me. And then I, uh, your, your next question um, after success was what, Kenny? What is your why? Your why? What is my why? Okay. Why do you do so, what you do? So the reason why I do what I do is I do it for the Marines, number one. And I do it for the Marines because I believe that the Marine Corps needs great leadership, right? So I've worked with good leaders and I've also worked with the bad. Um, this woman that I saw as a great leader from the get-go, uh, let me, let me show, her, her, show, show, show you guys your picture again. <laughs> yes. Hey, I love feel her like so after much. This, after this, I feel like I feel like I need to know it too, man. Yeah, I need one. Day. <laughs> Sergeant Major Levy. Yeah. Um, can Sergeant, we get one? Uh, is, is, is it possible for <laughs> civilians to get one of those? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I can send you guys one. Absolutely. To get I one. have so oh, many of it in my office. Look at that. I, I have three of it in my office. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Sasha Ripper is also a great leader. But you know, I will, and, and, I, and I've, I've, I've taken something from all of it. And that has made me into this compound interest of a leader where I'm giving the best of leadership that I've had. And I'm going to continue to give that for the next 10 years or whenever I do decide to retire from the military. Yeah. So the Marines are my why. When I see a Marine succeed or have a Marine email me or a Marine call me like, thank you, so you know, like that makes me happy. That keeps me going. And the second why is my family. I do it for my two beautiful kids and I do it for my husband um, because I love what it is that I do. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's tough. But what isn't, right? Yeah. What isn't in life? Like what, anything that you want to achieve, want to be good at in life, you have to work at it. So I can easily give up and say, you know, I'm going to go work at X, Y, and Z. But when I get there, I still have to wake up 
pretty doggone oh, early yeah. in the morning to go there, right? Mm -hmm. And I still have to take care of my coworkers and my peers and people that I work for and work with, right? And I still have to leave my job um, and come back the next day. Exactly what I'm doing right now, but I'm doing it for Marines instead. So um, success, again, is write it down, work at it, achieve it, and my why is the Marines and my family. Incredible. Write it down, work at it, and achieve it. Achieve it. And, 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 and I it. really want to note that um, no matter how big or small you think that your, your dreams are, you are already successful by rewriting it down. Yeah. By you writing it down, you've already taken a major step at it because so many people, you know, leave this world, really have one life to live, live this right. world and don't even know what it is that they want to accomplish. They don't even try it. So, but by you writing it down, you, you, you have taken a major leap at being yeah. successful already. And the rest of it is smooth sailing. Just on your, on your worst days, just do one thing. Just lay your bed, take a shower or look in your email and, you know, do something towards that thing. You don't have to try and achieve everything that day. Just do one thing and Absolutely. it will come, everything else will come naturally after that. I agree with that. That kind of reminds me of my trainer. He's a Marine. It's like killer mode. Um, so um, when we're working, I was like, killer, come on, can I give him one more? But then he knows, he knows, he knows on, on days that I'm tired that, you know, it's just like, okay, all right, you're just going to relax today. But the goal, though, is that you never give up. Tomorrow, yeah. when you're feeling better, we're going at it. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So you, you, you should not always be all gone all about achieving all your success at one day. Just take it with good pace. Yeah. And, yes. and I think I'll also add to that before we close out here, I would say one thing that is also very important uh, about what you what are describing here about just essentially pacing yourself, right? Because you cannot be 100% every day. Because so you also have to recognize that you have to avoid burnout, right? And if you're 100% at it every day, which is, um, it should not be possible. Um, you, will, you will run into burnouts. And once you run into burnouts, that could essentially turn out to be a bigger setback than just right. taking that one day off, right? A burnout could become depression, sadness, and now you're taking a week off and you don't want to go back to what you were doing because <laughs> you've now dealt with this burnout, right? So yeah, you got uh, it. Yeah. yeah, if I'm understanding what you're saying there, pace yourself, but be consistent. Right. right. So yeah. on that day when you're not giving it 100%, yeah, do something. You give it 1%. Give it 1%. Yeah. It's okay. Give it 1%. One, tomorrow yeah. you'll be at 1% more. You know, I think yeah, there me, you go. Yeah. Um, there's, there's been times when I, I don't know if you like going to the gym, right? And especially back in the days when I had the, the GTI, but I just love driving that car so much that there were times when I didn't feel like going to the gym, but just uh, what I had to do was just get myself to go sit in the car. Right. That does it for and, you. That's it, man. If I sit in the car and I start it up, I'm like, I want to drive. Well, I guess we're going to drive. All right, to the gym let's now. go. You know what I mean? Just silly. Exactly. You know, so, I mean, I was, I was, I was uh, driving maybe one mile over the speed limit, but at the end of the day, I got my workout in, you know, so find something to keep you going. Did you actually go inside the gym? Um, well, I mean, at that point when you're sitting outside the gym and you're like, well, we are here now, <laughs> you know, but then we go inside the gym. Now, even for the days when I didn't, that I didn't even make it to the gym, I'll go out for a walk like right now, right? Sometimes I'll tell Kenny, like, I missed the gym today, so I'm going to go out and go for a walk because walk, I didn't yeah. make it, right? So just yeah. something, anything. Yeah, something, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I'll, I'll, I'll make one commitment. I missed the gym today, so I need to go out for a walk. Yeah, so, so uh, something, yes, yeah. Nothing is something, something is something. <laughs> exactly. Hey, we exactly. have a marine in the house. I have to be honest all hey. the time. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Keep it sharp, keep it sharp. Hey, this has been an absolute pleasure, an absolute delight. I really uh, enjoy this. Um, and uh, Miss Polemi Ola Le. Yes. yes. 
Hola, yes. Just Look call her mayor, a major, major. <laughs> hey, no, call her general. 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 Exactly. General. Exactly. General. Exactly. General. General. Right. So, um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you so much to, for having me. Absolutely. We hope to uh, have you again someday to chat about more of the things that you're working on and, and accomplishing. And um, hopefully, this podcast is also going to help someone else uh, to get out there and get after it. All right. All right, awesome. thank you. For sure. Thanks for your okay, service. Again. Simplified to all the Marines. Simplified. Out there. My regards to Peter. Hi, Peter. Hey, yes, we have to tell Peter. Um, <laughs> I think Peter is going to be absolutely excited to hear. Like, like uh, Peter, you touched the life already. Exactly. <laughs> absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you for your service. Until next time. Stay right. out. Bye. Double out. <laughs> Bye. Awesome.